The Soviet Army had this most advanced tank during World War II. The Soviet Union built the T-50 light infantry tank at the start of World War II. The design for this vehicle had some advanced features, but it was complicated and expensive, and only a small production run of 69 tanks was completed. Wanna know more? Hey guys, welcome to our channel, Alpha Tanks, where we tell you about military tanks, from the most famous World War II battle tanks to the most advanced MBTs at the present. So stay with us till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. And before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future. And let's jump in. The participation of Soviet volunteer tank units in the Spanish Civil War was pivotal in shaping Soviet tank designs for World War II. Soviet tanks dominated their foreign rivals in Spain due to their firepower, but their thin armor, like most tanks at the time, made them vulnerable to the new towed anti-tank guns being supplied to infantry units. This discovery resulted in the development of a new generation of Soviet tanks. The T-26 light tank and the BT series of fast tanks were the most common Soviet tank models in 1939. The Red Army had approximately 8,500 T-26s of all variants on the eve of World War II. The T-26 was a slow-moving light tank intended for infantry support, originally designed to keep up with ground troops. The BT tanks were light, fast tanks designed to fight other tanks, but not infantry. Both were thinly armored, resistant to small arms, but not anti-tank rifles and 37mm anti-tank guns, and their gasoline-powered engines, common in tank designs around the world at the time, were prone to bursting into flames at the slightest provocation. Development of various tank designs to find a replacement began, such as the T-50 light tank, which was intended to replace the T-26 infantry tank. Even before it was ready for mass production, the underlying concept of light tanks was invalidated by wartime experience. The T-50 was designed to replace older light reconnaissance models. Most of these had amphibious capabilities, but lacked the protection and armament needed to deal with other armored vehicles. An RK AKA specification from 1939 requested an infantry support light tank to replace the aging, mass-produced T-26, which was largely inspired by the British 1929 six-ton design and the BT series, which was developed from the Christie prototype of 1930. The new T-50 design was to replace these older vehicles, be mass-produced, and operate alongside the BT-7Ms in service with the Red Army. It had many advanced features and appeared to be a scaled-down T-34 in many ways. If it had been mass-produced, it would have been a formidable addition to the Red Army's arsenal. However, events had other plans. The OKMO began design work under S. Ginsberg, as well as L. Troyanov, born in 1939. OKMO was situated on the SM Kirov factory number 185 in Leningrad, and it would also take over production. The improved T-126 and T-127 prototypes were based on a portion of the original design from the abandoned T-46-5 project. During the Great Purge, the Bureau was gutted and work at the KE was resumed. In May 1940, Voryoshilov factory number 174 in Leningrad. Both prototypes were finished and tested in late 1940. This raised a number of issues, which Troyanov addressed before the production design was ready in January of 1941. It was expected that production would begin in April 1941, but various technical issues caused delays. In the meantime, the second project designed to replace the BT series has been developed at Ukraine's Molyshev factory. The first prototype looked like a scaled-down T-34 with comparable performance but smaller and thus less expensive to produce. When Operation Barbarossa began, a first prototype had been built and the production design was well underway. In June, it was decided to halt all projects and shift all tank production to the Ural Mountains. This was followed by critical production decisions centered on a small number of models. While OKMO was transferred to Omsk in September 1941, design work resumed, but the final model had several flaws and proved to be as expensive to build as the T-34, leading to its cancellation after only 69 were built until January 1942. The T-50's final design was heavily influenced by the T-34 with the same turret design. The overall excellent welded, well-sloped armor was also comparable. It had a narrower frontal section, emphasizing the slope of the upper hull, which narrowed towards the back. The front glacis was 37 millimeters thick, with a slope equivalent thickness of 50 millimeters. The engine deck, roof, and belly all had a minimum thickness of 12 millimeters. The main armament was the standard 45 millimeter Model 1938 gun, which could hold 
150 rounds. It performed well in comparison to the standard German 37mm, but had crude sights. The driver was on the left side, with his own hatch opening downwards, and could see through a simple slit with an armored cover. The hexagonal turret with sloped sides was novel. It was a three-man design despite its size. The tank commander was stationed in the turret's rear right-hand corner behind the gunner. He had his own cupola with the eight vision blocks, a feature that was later adopted by the majority of Soviet tank designs. The gunner was on the right and the loader was on the left. Both had their own one-piece front hatch that doubled as a shield when opened. Previously, radio was only available to tank commanders. The T-34, on the other hand, had a unique drivetrain that included six smaller road wheels suspended on their own torsion bar unit and three return rollers. The drive sprockets were in the back. At the front, a seventh road wheel was raised to serve as a track tensioner and idler. The specially designed V4 diesel inline-six engine produced 300 horsepower and had a power-to-weight ratio of 21 horsepower per ton. This resulted in a top speed of 60 kilometers an hour and an operational range of 220 kilometers. It is unknown whether drum-style external fuel tanks were ever installed. The T-50 had some issues in common with other Soviet tank designs, such as a cramped and uncomfortable fighting compartment. The troublesome V-4 inline-6 diesel caused so many development issues that the series was canceled as a result. The T-60, T-70, Su-76 on the other hand, shared a more reliable standard GAZ truck engine. The T-60 and T-70 light tanks, as well as the Su-76 self-propelled gun, were powered by standard GAZ truck engines. Because specialized tank engines were more expensive to manufacture, they were reserved for higher performance vehicles. The BT-8 fast tank, T-34 medium tank, KV-1, IS-2 heavy tanks, and their variants all used variants of the same standard 12-cylinder Model V-2 diesel engine. The V-4 engine was extremely unreliable and the design flaws were unsolvable. The T-50's engine's low reliability and high cost contributed to its demise. As a result, despite an overall excellent design, the engine caused numerous delays and the entire project succumbed to more pressing priorities. There were two models available, a basic model and an armored model. Many Soviet tanks had their armor reinforced with welded or bolted add-on plates just prior to the German invasion of the USSR. Some climate Voroshilov heavy tanks, T-28 medium tanks, and T-26 light tanks were outfitted with armor. These upgrades were also given to a few T-50s. The bolt heads that hold the armor added to the turret sides and whole front distinguish this up-armored variant. In comparison, the standard T-50 is a very clean-looking vehicle. At its thickest points, the T-50's armor was 57 millimeters thick. When Operation Barbarossa began, some T-50s, like many other models, received additional layers of bolted-on applique armor. Following this, the Glacis and turret reached a thickness of 57 millimeters, which was impressive for a supposedly light tank. In 1941 through 43, the majority of light tank production was made up of the less advanced but simpler T-60 and T-70 light tanks. By 1943, infantry tanks were considered obsolete, and the light infantry support role was taken over by cheaper Su-76 self-propelled guns. Light tanks were being replaced in tank regiments by T-34 medium tanks. Light tank liaison and reconnaissance roles were taken over by less expensive armored cars and lend-lease supplies of Canadian and British Valentine tanks, as well as U.S. Stewart light tanks, or M3. At least two T-50s are still in existence today. One can be found at the Finnish Tank Museum in Parola. This is a later model with applique armor bolted on. The Kubinka armor collection outside of Moscow has a standard T-50 on display. And that's it for today's video, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please click on that like button and share it with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you'll see even more of our incredible videos. Hey, thanks for watching, and we'll catch up in our next video. Have a great day. Have a great day.